Well, hello everyone. Uh, I'm so glad to be here with you today. Uh, I'm Hannah. I'm an IT architect and a mobile expert at Octo Technology, and I'm currently based in Paris. It's looking great out here. So today I'm going to talk to you about super apps and how they're changing the way we think um, and we build mobile, application, mobile applications. So in this talk, we're going um, into details about mobile app strategy, application architecture and team organization. And finally, we'll talk about development solutions and technical choices. At the end of this presentation, please feel free to ask your questions or to share your feedbacks and comments. So I'm going to start with uh, a little bit of history and remind you of the way we use mobile applications. Um, today, uh, an average person, person uses uh, around three to eight applications per day, even though we each have like dozens, maybe hundreds of applications installed on our phones. Each application usually uses um, and offers a single service, like for example, food delivery, shopping, flight reservation, and so on. The problem is that we have so many apps on our phones uh, that we do not use, or maybe we use very rarely. This is especially a problem for companies who have invested a lot of money and a lot of effort in developing these apps and are not able to engage their customers or, and their users and keep them on the application long enough to understand and to anticipate their future needs and changes. So to resolve these problems, um, a new strategy has emerged a few years ago, especially in Asia, to build and create mobile apps uh, that engage and keep users on the app and even attract um, a new base of customers and offer them a custom and personal user experience. These apps is what we call super apps. A um, few examples that you see here are WeChat, uh, Revolut, Tinkoff, Gojek, uh, etc. So you might be saying, what's the actual difference between traditional apps and super apps? As we said earlier, traditional apps offer a single service. Uh, it's really that simple. Uh, there's also what we call mobile app suite, which is a group of applications that belong to the same company, but are developed and installed separately on our phones. Uh, they also might share some features and some components. Some examples you definitely know are Google Suite and Microsoft Suite. Super apps, however, are a group of services that can belong to the same company or to multiple companies and are on the same application. So to go further in details, let's take the example of this super app. So we have multiple services like a chatbot, a car hailing service, a payment service, etc. They're all, all offered by the same company. We also have third party services offered by partner companies like shopping and travel booking. How do we fit all of this in the same application? Um, I think it's a big challenge. I don't know if you agree, but it's a really big challenge. Uh, it's a challenge because the complexity of the application will increase as we increase the number of services. Uh, that will require us to design a scalable application architecture and to be able to scale the team's organization as well. One of the biggest challenges also is working with partner companies to integrate, uh, sorry, to, with partner companies to integrate their services into the super app. It is necessary to think about what the partnership strategy is about and the implications uh, of this strategy, and also to think uh, about what kind of technical uh, ecosystem that the company has to offer to its partners to be able to develop, to test, and to integrate their services. So addressing these challenges will not be only technical, um, it will be on different levels, 
uh, like the enterprise business architecture um, and strategy, uh, the team organization, uh, and also um, the solutions that, and, and the technical uh, aspects that we're going to use to develop this application. Great, now how do we make a super app? The first thing to, to do is to think about what kind of services uh, my company would like to offer, what kind of services uh, I will be prioritizing. Um, for example, should I be promoting partner services? Should I be promoting only my services? Uh, if I'm going to do that, uh, then I need to think about who's responsible of developing, who's responsible of testing, and also maintaining these services. Putting forward uh, partner services means that we're going um, for what we call an allocentric business model. Uh, that is a strategy that aims to cooperate with business partners, including competitors, um, and promoting the, their services as well to co-create value and benefit everyone. This will require a lot of thinking and a lot of planning before jumping into a super app development. Another thing we need to think about is how to organize teams uh, around the super app, especially in the case of partner services, since the teams will be external to my company. As you may notice, the services are completely separate and different sometimes, and might require several teams of developers. For example, um, a team to develop the chat service, another team to develop the ride hailing service, and also a team to develop a payment service that is going to be used across these services. Um, if we go to if we go back to the challenges of uh, developing a super app, we talked about the architecture and the organization scalability. Uh, we also talked about services size and decoupling. All of these characteristics remind us of uh, a known concept uh, like microservices and micro frontends. And by analogy uh, with these concepts. Uh, a service in a super app is actually called a mini app or a micro app. Now that we have all that cleared up, we can talk about the technical choices and uh, the development requirements. To build a super app today, uh, we have several choices and approaches. We can build super apps using native solutions like iOS frameworks, since they have been uh, used by mobile developers for many years now, and so is the same case for Android archives. Um, we can also use uh, what we call Android dynamic features. Uh, also for the native solution, or we can use hybrid solutions leverage, leveraging web techniques like micro frontends. I think most of you are familiar uh, with Android archives and uh, iOS frameworks, especially if you're uh, mobile developers, since they have been used by developers uh, for many years now. Um, it's a super app. Uh, that is developed entirely in native technologies uh, in a modular architecture. Um, actually, for frameworks and archives are basically modules with their own resources and their own code and can also have their own life cycle, which improves scalability and modularity. The advantage advantages of this approach is that native technologies are known for their performance uh, and their security compared to web. And since they existed for a long time now, most native uh, mobile developers know how to use them to create, uh, to create large scalable applications. The problem, however, it requires a lot of discipline and guidelines and requires a team to work closely together. Another problem is also the application size and the updates. Since all mini applications will be built and bundled in the same app, 
uh, it will increase the size of the application drastically and it will also require um, mini app updates to go through mobile stores, Google Play and Apple Store and go through their guidelines. It takes a lot of time, especially uh, for companies who want to edit or update uh, a single mini app or a service and to do it quickly. Another native solution uh, we talked about is Android dynamic features. I think today there's no equivalent of this approach on iOS, correct me if I'm wrong, um, which can be limiting if you want to go on both platforms. This solution allows to break down the application into multiple bundles that are downloaded and added to the application on demand through what we call the Google Dynamic Delivery. This is quite handy if a user wants to reduce the sizes of the application and only use services uh, when they need them. However, it only works for Android and still requires many applications to be updated through Google Store. Um, Google also, uh, if you read their documentation, recommends not using more than 10 dynamic features per application to maintain performance, which might be uh, limiting for some companies with large applications. The approach that has been used the most in developing mobile apps, uh, uh, super apps today, is custom micro frontends. Uh, it's the approach that has been used by WeChat, by Gojek, uh, and other famous super apps in Asia. It requires developing all mini applications um, in web technologies and embedding them in a native uh, application using the JavaScript bridge. This helps decoupling uh, mini applications from the native application. Um, it also leverages uh, web technologies uh, and offers great advantages by bypassing mobile stores to update the mini applications. Um, Ionic Portals recreates the same approach as micro frontends, but come with further enhancement and solutions to overcome the limitations in using micro frontends. The main difference here is using Capacitor as a JavaScript bridge. So basically we have the same advantages as micro frontends and even more as Ionic takes care of performance and security issues. Um, also Ionic provides uh, a cloud um, as an additional infrastructure to host micro frontends and to allow downloading and updating uh, mini apps directly uh, without going through stores uh, or adding additional infrastructures like servers. So to summarize what we're saying, uh, super apps came to reinforce users' engagements and to offer them new ways to retain them longer on mobile applications. If we're going to build a super app, the first step is to think about what strategy you're going to adopt or to put in place and think about your part partnership nature if you're going to add third party services. Uh, when all that is done, choosing the right technical solution could be really challenging, especially if you don't have uh, an advanced expertise in web or in mobile. Luckily, Ionic Portals is easy to use and can spare you a lot of constraints like security and additional services and so on. So thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed this talk and feel free if you have any questions.